And hello everybody, I'm Auric with your Vixit Auto and today I'm going to be showing you how to change out your oxygen sensors in your truck, more specifically a 2000 GMC Sierra 1500. Now the th same thing is going to be for the Silverados. A lot of these vehicles tend to have the same drivetrain, so it's all going to be the same throughout. So I'll show you exactly how I'm going to be changing it out on these. There are four total oxygen sensors in this car. There's two that are upstream, two that are downstream. The upstream ones are the ones that come before the catalytic converters are the ones that are closest to the engine. And then there are two downstream which are after the catalytic converter. And I'll show you exactly how to swap those out. And I'm going to be swapping them out with GM Genuine Parts. These set me back roughly about 40 bucks each, give or take a few dollars. And so it was total about $160 for all four oxygen sensors. The thing is this truck has 260,000 miles on the clock and it's about time that these get replaced. There's been a check engine light that's been flickering on and off and when I do get it scanned it does say that the oxygen sensors are getting misread. So the only things that we're going to need for this job are going to be two upstream and two downstreams. The two upstreams are going to be the same number. It's going to be the AFS 138 and the two downstreams are going to be the AFS 106. So these ones are going to be before the catalytic converters. These ones are going to be after. I rented this tool from AutoZone. It's an oxygen sensor socket wrench. Uh, it comes with multiple sockets. This is the one that I'm going to use. It's a 22 millimeter short oxygen sensor wrench. And the reason why I'm going to use this one is because it's very tight fit and this is what's going to give me the clearance that I need in order to take out the oxygen sensors. The reason why you need a special socket is in order to slip it through the cable and that way you can get to the nut here and then you could just put any 3 8 inch wrench right over here and then that way you can twist it off. If you can't find one of these sockets one thing that you can do is you can actually clip off the wire in order to be able to fit a long socket in there. That is an option to do that. I prefer not to do that in case you do end up getting the wrong oxygen sensor. It does go out. You still have one that you can still use because when you clip it, it will no longer be usable. So now we just crawl underneath. So not to get better perspective, this is the catalytic converter on the passenger side. This is going to be bank two. The driver's side is going to be bank one. Now if you're sitting there wondering what makes bank one, what makes bank two, bank one will always be where your number one firing cylinder is, which in the case of this truck, it's going to be on the driver's side. In many cars it's going to be on the driver's side, but you may want to make sure and bank two is going to be just the opposite side of that. Whether the number of two cylinder is going to be right behind it or right next to it doesn't matter. As long as you know what bank one is, bank two is going to be the opposite side. On the passenger side, here's the catalytic converter. The bank two sensor two is going to be right here and bank two sensor one. Here's the cat and then if you follow it, you'll see bank two sensor one. I will actually start with bank one sensor one since we are before the cat. If you see here, if you follow this cable back, you will find the O2 sensor connector and what you just have to do is go on this connector, pull up on this tab over here and then the sensor should just pop out. Um, now notice that there is actually kind of like a tree style clip here. Uh, chances are that this is going to be on the body. You could just simply pull it out, um, but mine wasn't on there. In fact, uh, I actually have no idea where the hole is. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to zip tie this to another wiring harness as long as it's up uh, out of the way and it's not being in contact with anything hot. So now all we have to do is grab a little socket tool, grab the cable, slip it through the little slot and then just feed the socket through and just get it to slip just right through there. Now we can attach a ratchet to the little open slot there, just square to square. Now a tip is the longer the ratchet, the better, the more leverage that you have in order to take these out because these tend to be pretty stuck. We're going to put in some copper NICs around the threads in order to make this easier for the next time we have to do this, but I was able to finally br break it loose. And then once you get it loose, you should be able to just get it out the rest of the way by hand. And here we have the new oxygen sensor. I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of copper anises just along the threads. You want to be very careful to put it just along the threads and not on the sensor itself. We're going to be very careful, apply a very thin layer, it does not need too much. Once we have plenty of copper anises into it, we can start threading this in by hand and then torque it down to 35 pound-feet of torque. And now we can reach in. The angle is difficult here, but all you have to do is just connect the sensor 
And if you know where the clip goes, awesome. If not, then you could just tie it to another wiring harness that you see here with a zip tie and just get it up and out of the way. I would not recommend it going loose because you never know if I might hit something that's really hot. And now we just do the same thing that we did here and apply it to the other three oxygen sensors. I'll just speed through it and show you how I'm gonna do it. On bank two, sensor one, I had to go from the outside in order to unclip this. It was just up and out of the way, so. And then just remove the oxygen sensor. Then we put in the new oxygen sensor with fresh copper NICs on the threads. Make sure it's torqued to 35 pound-feet. And then connect the connector. Moving on to bank one sensor two. So this is gonna be after the cat. The clip is just right over here. If, uh, just make sure you unclip it and then you should be able to just pull it out. This one was a difficult one. I was able to get it to loosen by getting the socket on there and then a longer ratchet to go all the way back here. And then by pulling and yelling, I was able to finally get it to go loose. Hopefully this little tip will help somebody out. And now we could thread the new one on there. Then we torque it down to 35 pound feet, connect the connector till it clicks, just like that. And just above the transmission cross member, there's this little metal bracket that has a hole and then that's actually where it mounts. So after you connect it, you could go ahead and just mount it right there. And then the last one is bank two sensor two and the connector is actually up on the frame of the car. And just like the other ones, all you have to do is just lift up and then pull out. And now we can remove this last sensor. Now we can put in our last sensor, torque the sensor down to 35 pound feet. Then I connect the connector till it clicks just like that and then keep the sensor in place by pushing it through here and now we're done and that's all there is to it thank you guys so much for watching that's four sensors that were replaced on this truck and as you saw it was a very simple job it just took a little bit of effort on those that were kind of stuck but it just took a couple hours out of my day and most of that was just finding the tools and making sure the car was jacked up so that way I have plenty of room to show you guys how to do it otherwise I'd be able to crawl underneath and do it in about half the time but thank you guys so much for watching I've had some more Impala parts show up so I'll be doing an update on the Supernatural Impala tribute car but please be sure to leave a like subscribe and a share and let me know what you guys think down in the comments thank you guys so much for watching